right, let's look at verse number six. Are you there? All right. Why don't you read it with me? Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Verse 8, whom you have not seen, love, and whom though now you see him not, yet believing, you be rejoiced with unspeakable and full of glory. I want to talk about salvational joy. Salvational joy. If you don't catch it right now, let it hang in the wind of the Holy Spirit and it'll bring, you, it'll bring it to your mind. Salvational joy. Not emotional joy. Salvational joy. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the preacher's going to talk about salvational joy joy. God, thank you for this time. We ask you to bless your people with ear to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Stand up in me that I speak the words of very oracles of your word for the body edification. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Genuine salvation and true joy belong together and are not limited to heavenly inhabitants. Genuine salvation. When we speak of salvation, their joy must be a part of that for its, its origin is in God and he gives that to help us to be escorted through the trials of life. Peter's goal in this text is to have believers understand the joy that should be their own constant expression in light of eternal salvation. It's not, it's not, it's not designed it, uh, for, for nothing but supporting and helping you through the trials of life. This joy reflects what Peter certainly knew from Old Testament teaching. He he's, is reflected in the, even in the Psalms teaching. He's, he's telling of the experience experiences of those who suffer with Christ because they are saved. A lot of times we, 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 we try to measure joy with how we participate and we try to associate uh, jumping and praising with the joy that comes as a result of some external happenings. But this joy that I have, <laughs> the world didn't give it to me. You can take away my toys, you can take away my money, but you can't take away my joy. Peter wrote early of the subject of joy and the believers because his readers need the reminder and the encouragement as they face severe persecution. This is why, some of the why, 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 why. Jesus said something, he, he, he said even to those who have lost loved ones, he spoke, he said, he said, blessed are they that mourn, 
for they shall be comforted. It's, it, see, the comfort is not the fact that you lost a loved one or because you're sick. It's, the comfort comes in the security of having confidence of your status in salvation. So Jesus never looked at, at, at joy from the standpoint of you being happy that, hap that what happened to your external or what you was given or taken away from you. It has to do with the content of what's in you and what you've been guaranteed by him and you should be happy because it's of him. So the clear implication is that though the recipient of this letter were, were because of those who are suffering unjustly, they should expect such mistreatment and endure it with joy and patience. Mm -hmm. The fact is that, that I'm, I'm not asking you to walk around and be happy because stuff is happening to you. Right. That ain't what I'm saying. There's another reason you should be happy. You should be happy if your name is written in the Lamb books of life. And I don't think we too many times, I want to express that, that because we, we come to church and we look for something that God's going to give us that can help us be happy on Monday. You already got it. Salvational joy is not just some brief, shallow, circumstantial emotion, but rather something permanent and profound. Mere happiness comes from positive external events. But salvational joy results from a deep-rooted confidence that one possess eternal life from the living God through the crucified and risen Christ. And when it gets fully realized, and when Jesus said, well done, it, it, it's it's going to be fully realized because, watch this, he said, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. And so he says, he says, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Well, here, 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 I, 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 don't, I don't expect you to run out of here being happy today. Uh, because don't fake it, don't fake it. He said, wherein, watch this. He said, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Two things happening here. He said, as a result of what I just taught you, concerning the security of your inheritance, you need to rejoice in that. You can, you, 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 you can praise God for that. Yeah, oh, watch this. Uh, and also, it, it is in the present tense, which means it should continue. Because we say, I can be happy today. But if you take my... If you take anything from me that I don't want you to have, I'm going to be sad tomorrow. But this joy is eternal. Can I, can I show you why? Can I show you why? Well, let me, let me show you why. Uh, because watch this. What, 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 watch this. He says, in, in this you greatly rejoice. Now he's referring to the preceding verse of this sixth verse. Now, if you back up, well, give me a back up. Run, run. Just give me a back up. There you go. He says, watch this. Here's why you ought to be joyful. Because you are kept by the power of God yeah, yeah. through faith yeah. 
unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This word kept had to be regarded. It means that your salvation is guarded and secured by God himself. See, that's why people, all these people talking around there, once saved, all, you want, want, no, they say once saved, always saved, and it's true, but that ain't the way you explain it. Because the normalcy, well, that it brings out the controversy because you're going to have the opposite people say stuff like, well, I was saved, but I'm not saved anymore. You were never saved. I wish I had time to tell you. You see, the only way you can understand the joy is to know and have confidence, which is my first point, in a protected inheritance. That verse says, it is kept. My inheritance is kept by the power of God. I know you still may not get it. Well, let me, let, me, let me do something else. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Put it on the screen for me. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, let's see which one of these scriptures I want. Uh, verse 13. Okay, watch this. Go, go through this real quick. Make it simple. The reason why you are saved and can't be unsaved is because the scripture teach in whom also you you in whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of God or truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed. Somebody said sealed. sealed. With that holy spirit of promise. My my God, help me, help me. See, he said, when you got Say when you truly got when, when you truly got saved. I ain't talking about that church traditional language. When you got saved, you were sealed with the Holy Ghost. Say, I'm trying to get see some of y'all come to church all like you've been beat up and ain't got no joy you're all sad and broken down yeah I, I, I ain't coming to church make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye land serve the Lord with gladness why because I'm saved and I can't lose it watch give me 14 it's continuing which is, and what he's referring to, watch this, he's referring to the Holy Ghost, which is the earnest of our inheritance. You see what I'm saying? He said the Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. The Holy Ghost is the guarantee of our inheritance. You ever bought a house? How many, how many, how many of you ever bought a house? Did you put earnest money down? And guess what? If you ever refuse to buy that house, they have a right to keep your money. Did you know that? So watch this. The word of God said that the Holy Ghost is our down payment on our eternal inheritance. I wish I had somebody understood. He said that since Yes. He said the Holy Ghost is the seal of my eternal inheritance. I, I wish I had. And, 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 and the writer here in Peter, he says, he says, he says, he says, to an inheritance incorruptible. Uh, yeah, and undefiled. And, and that faded it, not away. I wish, now see right there, I'm about to run all over this church because, see, I know, I know, I know that I know, I know that I know I'm saved. Because all I did was trust in the word of God. 
He said, this don't fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you and it's kept by the power of God. So um, I mean, if, if you're going to make an argument with some frivolous mumbo jumbo and some kind of philosophical concept that's not substance, you, 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 can, you can try to make it, but I'm going to give you what the word said. The word said I'm saved. The word said that I am secured in my eternal salvation, which means that now I have reason to have joy. He said, he says, in which detail the first great truth that brings Christian joy, namely their protected eternal inheritance. Watch this. Greatly rejoicing is an intense, expressive term that means to be supremely and abundantly happy. A happiness that is not tentative. A happiness that is not based on circumstantial or superficial feeling. So just because you got a goosebump feeling, don't mean you're saved. Just because you got a smooth and nice dance, don't mean you're saved. But I have a dance because I am saved. I wish I had. I sing because I'm saved. Ain't nobody going to help me. I serve because I'm saved. And this makes me happy. So what's this? He? So, so first of all, he, he says, that there must be a confidence if you're going to have salvational joy, you got to have a confidence in a protected inheritance. Apostle Paul urged believers to focus on things above, not on things of the earth. All believers have the indwelling Holy Spirit who serve as a pledge or seal to guarantee their their eternal inheritance. And that makes me happy. And I don't care, I might be sick, but I'm happy. <laughs> I may be broke, but I'm happy. Come on here, help me somebody. Because my happiness is not determined by my external circumstance. The second thing he says here, he said, watch the text. It says, wherein greatly rejoice, though now for a season. Uh, my happiness should be transitory. My happiness should be based, uh, uh, I believe it, that like the Sunday school lesson said this morning, that they, they, they they, they serve God in their affliction. So my happiness is transitory. It does not depend on my circumstance because it is based upon an inheritance and a guarantee of my eternal security. So, so watch this. When I have trials, and tribulations it should not diminish my joy ain't nobody gonna help me here no, no, he said he turns to a sort of joy that, that has immense practical ramification for believers confidence in a proven joy rather than allowing severe trial and persecution to steal their joy and spoil their anticipation and future blessings in heaven genuine believers with a biblical perspective know that such suffering actually can add to their joy as they're experiencing grace and anticipated future. What did you say? What do you say? 
What are you saying? I'm saying that no trial, no difficulty, no problems should ever interfere. As a matter of fact, I should be transitory. I should transition in the real joy. Watch this. Uh, that the trial, I mean for a season, if need be. What are you saying? Sometime God has to prove us by allowing trouble to come. It's just for a little while. <laughs> ah, it's just a seasonal thing. Ain't nobody going to help me here. <laughs> For sooner or later, they're going to pass. They're going to pass quickly. And therefore, by my allowing joy to be expressed in my soul, I know that God has allowed it for it becomes necessary. That's why I say, if need be. Stay with the text. It says, if need be. Watch this. Some things God allowed yes, sir. Yes, sir. to prove your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where you going, Satan? Up and down, to and through, to and fro. Yeah, sick and who I'm. Have you tried my servant, Job? I wish I had somebody here. You got to understand that you have troubles sometimes because God allows them. And no one is exempt from the troubles that God allows. You say, well, why did God do that to Job? It, it was needed. Ain't nobody going to help me. It was needed because he knew what Job had. He knew Job's faith. It was needed so that you, can, you and I can learn from what Job went through. Have you tried, Job? Uh, I ain't messing with Job because you got a hedge around him. I'll take it down. Just don't touch your life. I wish I had somebody to understand. See, 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 even Job, who did not understand what was happening to him, he proved the authenticity of his faith when even he was tempted with the devil to even bless, to bless, to curse God and in before his face. He had circumstances. He lost everything he had. The Lord gave. The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, if Job can go through that, my God, he has proven his faith in God. I, I ain't saying Job had to jump up and down to validate his joy, but he knew God. And God knew him. Do God know you? So trouble come is necessary. When is it necessary? When, when trouble serve a purpose in the believer's life. God uses trouble to humble the believer, to wean you away from worldliness, mammon, he'd wean you and point you toward heaven. I told somebody the other day that, that you, what we got to understand about God and what about what Jesus is doing, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't saving you to send you back. He's sin saving you that you may conform to his image. He's sanctifying us. One, some of the reasons we don't get in the feather because we can't appreciate, we can't allow and trust God at what he's doing with my life. God chasing them that he loves. Put up Romans 5.3. Romans 5.3. I want 5.3 and 4. 
Let me show you something else. That confidence, you got to have confidence in a proven faith. Watch this, Paul writes. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Wait a minute now. What you saying, Paul? We shine in trouble. I know you're going to shed a few tears and you ain't going to like it. You ain't going to want to hear it, but, but you got to keep your, keep your faith. Because what, until you get to the point, I don't care what happened to you, until you get to the point where you become transitional into that thing. I, I thought I would die when I lost my son. <laughs> Anybody ever lost a son know what I'm talking about? I thought that was the end of of the world and then I turned around and lost my dad but what you got to understand that my son was saved so what what do I preach this stuff for My dad was saved. And not only so, but we what? Glory in trials. Why are you going to shine? Knowing that. I wish I had. What you're going to see when you're going through trials, you're going to get pregnant. You're going to get pregnant with some stuff. Knowing that tribulations work at patience. Come on, put that, put that next verse up before I run it in the way. Put it, and patience has some children called experience. And experience has some children called hope. And hope, give me the next one. Don't embarrass you. When you see me, <laughs> crying it's not because I'm embarrassed it's because my joy is complete hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us God have to prove in you He have to prove in you. And if you ain't got there, you'll get there. Because what you got to understand about what God is doing in your life, he's moving you to a place where you can be sanctified to his use, sanctified to his purpose. I wish I had somebody. I, I, the one thing that bothered me about people when God is sending them through some changes to prove and test them, they give up on God. They stop being active. The, the, the church at Thessalonica was a church of idolatrous worship. But Paul talked about them and said, you are the model church because of your work of faith. You change your life and you become a model and example because of your labor of love. I wish I had somebody. See, because serving God is a joy to me. You know why it's a joy to me? Because of what he has already done for me. I'm celebrating my glorification even now. And there's nothing going to interfere with it. We save to be conformed to the image of Christ and God chasing who he loved he allowed trials to come in your life now some trials you bring on yourself but God do allow I want, I'm talking about the, the confidence of a proven faith and that's, what, that's what's happening in this thing 
do one more to second Thessalonians and I'll move to my last point and let you out of here before you lose your joy. <laughs> second Thessalonians 1 and 4. Put that on the screen, please. So I want to watch this. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulation that you what? See, the church experience was that they endured this stuff and thus they gained confidence in a proven faith. So whatever you're going through, it's an opportunity for you to manifest the faith of God. So trouble will come, but it's only what? Transitory. It's just for a little while. It should not diminish the believer's joy. It should be proof that you are who you are. Watch the text. Watch what it said. Though manifold temptation, that's, that's another fancy word for saying different kinds of temptation. You're going to have all kinds of temptation that's going to come in your life. They are multicolored. They look, like you ever seen a kaleidoscope? You had all different shapes and colors and all the colors. Well, that's how many temptations. You can't label them. You can't say, well, this is the one I'm going through right now, and that's the only one. I no, you ain't. You're going to have some more. Yeah. So trouble come to not diminish your, your joy. Now watch the text for, here's what he says, that the trial of your faith, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish. What he's doing here, he's saying that just like gold is a said, gold, gold is, uh, is a said, which, which said this, gold has proven content and quality based upon the heat of the fire the way you way you purify gold you have to heat it up and, and what happens is it when it meets, reach the melting point the dross will come to the surface how do you know God is not trying you to get the dross out? He, he, how do you know that he's not giving you, yes, this heat in the kitchen to get the dross out, to get the sin out, to get the dissatisfaction out, to get the gossip out, to get the lying out? I wish I had two folk who get it out. Why are you trying to get it out? So that you can serve him. He's proven your character. So, I must have, if I'm going to have salvation or joy, I must have confidence in a protected inheritance. And I got to have confidence in a proven faith. And, and sometimes he'll allow you to go through stuff. Because sometimes we will never know we had a problem until God solved them. Every mountain I face, I face it knowing that God is able. And the reason why I know he's able because he's done it before. Ain't nobody gonna help me. And, and if he did it before, he'll do it again. 
Lastly, it's kind of tricky. Lastly, it's tricky, but it talks about a confidence in a personal fellowship with Christ. Because as you look at the bottom line, you'll see that he says, uh, the being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found, watch this, unto the praise and honor and glory when and where? At the appearing of Jesus Christ. See, Mike, I, what, what I've got to understand that all that I go through, it's getting me ready for the fellowship with Jesus. God, I left you. You, you, you left. You should have been shouting right there. Because what you're going to find out that Christ has a standard that he will only accept in that day. It's got to be more than just coming to church. Ain't nobody going to help me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said, he said, when he said, well done, he said, well done to those who will serve him. I wish I had two folk. You see, I should serve him because I'm saved. I don't serve him just because I'm a member of the church. I serve him because I'm saved. And when my service is over, he's going to say, well done. Uh, I said, he will say, well done. So the Christian trial, there is nothing, whatever is in your life that's not without a purpose. If there is no joy without sorrow, there's no sunshine without a shadow. There's no harmony unmixed without discord. Like life is in Christ. Even though you are heavy, you are pressed down and you're forced to the earth as if under some kind of cruel load. The Christian joy is from heaven and his grief is from the earth. You are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Persecution may abound. The devil's aim, his fiery darts at those who are in the faith. But I'm afraid that he can't take away my joy. Yes, it is only in a struggle that I have to see what God is doing. Because the text said, if need be, if there's a necessity of trouble in my life, let, let it be. Because God who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I wish I had a praying church. There's a union between joy and the trials that we have in life. The scripture teaches in Luke 15, 7. Jesus said, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over 99. <laughs>